Hello, I'm Brian Watrous. I'm a VMware Certified Instructor and a Senior Technical Trainer with VMware Education. In this six-part video series, we will demonstrate how to upgrade from vSphere 4.1 to vSphere 5.5. In the previous video, we gave an overview of the process involved in upgrading your virtual infrastructure from vSphere 4.4 to vSphere 5.5. In this video, we'll demonstrate how to upgrade the vCenter server. In this video and the following videos, we're going to upgrade our vSphere 4.1 infrastructure to vSphere 5.5. Uh, just before we do this, let's take a few moments and take a look at our existing infrastructure. As you can see, our vCenter server, vc01, is currently running vCenter server 4.1.0. Now we're going to upgrade, in this video, we'll upgrade that vCenter server to 5.5. Now if we take a look at the host, our host is currently running ESX 4.1.0, and in later videos in this series, we're going to upgrade that host to 4, excuse me, to ESXi 5.5. If we take a look at our VMs, you can see that each of these VMs is running hardware version 7. We're going to upgrade that in later videos to hardware version 10. And additionally, each of these VMs is running VMware tools, but the version of VMware tools that's currently running in these virtual machines is not the latest and greatest version of VMware tools, but rather it's a version from back in the days of ESX 4.1. So we'll also update those in the video coming up. If we go back to our host for a few moments and take a look at configuration storage, notice that our VMFS data stores that we currently have are VMS S3 data stores. Uh, later on in this video series, we will upgrade those data stores to VMFS5 data stores. So that's our current infrastructure. And what we're going to do now is to begin the process of upgrading our infrastructure, starting with the vCenter server. Now, the first thing I'm going to do to begin that process is I'm going to bring up Microsoft's services management console and as you can see in here the vCenter server is currently running. Now in order to upgrade the vCenter server itself we actually need to schedule some downtime in order to perform the upgrade. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and actually stop the vCenter service here and as we wait for it to stop uh, notice that it points out that it also is going to stop the vCenter management web services service so we'll go ahead and let it do that. But as we wait for those services to stop, I want to make the very important point, which is that because the vCenter server is going to be down during the upgrade of the vCenter server itself, that means that some things will continue running. For instance, virtual machines will continue running, your house will continue running. But other things, as you may have noticed in the background here, other things cease to function when the vCenter server goes down. Uh, you may have noticed in the background there that we've lost our connection with uh, the vCenter update manager server. Another message passed by, which you can see here, that points out that all of our vSphere client connections have dropped. Other things that will drop during the, the scheduled downtime include things such as DRS and vMotion. So you do need to plan for some downtime and think about the consequences of, of what's up and what's not up during that downtime. Now it's gonna take approximately 30 minutes to do this upgrade of the vCenter server itself. So plan for that time here in the lab environment. It's not so crucial because there's no one logged in except for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and close out this vSphere client and close it out completely. And I'll simply minimize the services management console. And what we're gonna do next is I'm gonna pop the vCenter installation media into the drive. And here's the vCenter installer. Now before we talk about all the installation choices over here on the left side of the screen, I, I want to draw your attention uh, first to the installation checklist. There's a URL here that you can click on to go to an installation checklist that will help you to find the information that you need in order to perform the vCenter installation. Now over on the left side we see a number of different things that we can install and just looking at the top section, first of all notice that there's a simple install option and a custom install option. Now in this demonstration, we're going to choose to do a simple install. Uh, on the other hand, if we had chosen to do a custom install, that would allow us to install single sign-on server, the vSphere web client, 
the inventory service and the vCenter server itself each separately into separate machines as we see fit. Uh, the, the types of reasons that uh, may drive you to decide to make a custom installation would be performance issues or architectural design issues or perhaps you have corporate compliance issues. But for whatever reason, if you need to install these components separately, you can do so by performing a custom install. But that's not what we're going to do in this demonstration. In this demonstration, we're going to choose to do a simple install, which will result in all four of those things single sign-on, web client, inventory service, and the vCenter server all being installed into this one machine. So I'll click on the install button to perform our simple install. And as the installer continues forward, we see that it has a welcome screen, but notice this is specifically the welcome screen for the single sign-on portion of the installation. We'll click next. And on this screen, after reading the end user license agreement, we'll select the checkbox to indicate that we accept the license agreement. We'll click Next. And on this screen here, uh, we have the simple install prerequisite screen where the, the installer points out to you any issues that we need you to resolve. Now, I've purposely created a situation in this lab environment in order to show you an example uh, error message or warning message that you may see. In this case, as you can see, I've uh, slightly misconfigured my DNS server. But again, that was just to point out the type of message that you see uh, potentially at this part of the install. In the lab demonstration that we're performing here, we're going to simply ignore this warning message. But in real world deployments, if you receive any warning messages or error messages on the screen, you should address those issues before continuing onwards. So we're going to click next to ignore that particular warning message. And on this screen, what you can see is that we're going to assign a password. Let me actually type it real quickly here. And that password, if you uh, look above, is for an account called administrator at vSphere.local. That account in that domain is set up for you automatically when you install the single sign-on server. So that's, that's not an account in Active Directory or other such directory services. This is in the VMDIR um, directory of single sign-on itself. Now, what that account does primarily for us is it provides a an account that's uh, privileged enough to to administer the single sign-on server itself. Additionally, administrator at vSphere.local by default has vCenter administrator privileges. You can take away the vCenter admin privileges if you want later on after the installation is up and running. But for our purposes, we'll go ahead and allow the administrator at vSphere.local account to play its default dual role. It's both our SSO administrator account and it also acts as a vCenter administrator account. We'll click Next. When you install SSO, you can actually install just a single SSO site or uh, you can have multi-site SSO deployments. In the case of our demonstration here, we're just going to have a single site and uh, not feeling particularly creative here, so we'll just call the site first site. We'll click Next. And on the screen here, you see that um, SSO uses HTTPS port number 7444. Now, SSO is new in vSphere 5, and uh, with the introduction of things such as SSO and other services, new port numbers such as 7444 uh, exist in our vSphere environment and consequently if you're upgrading from vSphere 4 you ought to um, take note of this particular port number so that you can talk with your firewall administrators to make certain that this port number is open in your environment. We're going to click Next and continue onwards and on this screen here we're simply being asked uh, what destination folder we want the single sign-on and server to be installed in on this machine. We'll go with the default and simply click Next. And here we have a summary screen of the installation options that we've chosen. And so we'll simply review those. They all look good to me, so let's click the Install button. Now, again, I'll remind you that currently uh, we are installing the single sign-on server. 
Uh, that component does take some time to install, and as do some of the other components, which uh, we'll be stepping through here shortly in this demonstration. In order to conserve some of your time, we'll simply fast forward this video. The single sign on server installation is now complete. So the simple install continues onwards, and the next component that's being installed is the vSphere web client. Now there's no questions to ask for this particular component, so the installation is proceeding forward in an unattended fashion at this point. And once again, to save some of your time, we'll fast forward. The installation of the vSphere web client is now complete. So next, the installer moves on to installing the inventory service. Again, there's no questions to answer for this particular component. So the installation proceeds in an unattended fashion, and once again to save your time, we'll fast forward the video. The inventory service has now been installed completely, so the next part, the last part of this installation in the simple install is the vCenter server itself. Now the two previous components, the vSphere web client and the inventory service, didn't require that we answer any questions. On the other hand, the vCenter server installation is going to ask us a few questions. The first question that we're being asked is the license key for our vCenter server. So I'll enter the license key and click Next. On this screen, we're being offered uh, choices about our database. Uh, in the in case of this particular lab environment, our database that we're using is not an external SQL Server database or an Oracle database or an IBM DB2 database, but rather we're using the default embedded Express database. So no questions to answer here. Instead, we'll simply click the Next button. Now, we receive a warning message here pointing out that vSphere Update Manager is currently installed, uh, but we actually know that. In fact, uh, the very next component in the next video, the next component that we're going to be upgrading is vSphere Upgrade Manager. So no particular surprise with this warning message here. We, we know that we need to upgrade Update Manager. So we'll click OK. And on this screen, we're asked whether we want to upgrade our existing vCenter server database or to not upgrade it. In this case, we're, we are performing an upgrade, so we'll select Upgrade Existing vCenter Server Database. And you'll notice that a checkbox directly below there uh, ungraves. And by checking this checkbox, what I'm doing is indicating that I've taken the necessary proactive steps to back up our existing vCenter server database and the SSL certificate. Uh, notice that the message points out exactly where that certificate is. Um, th those are two key pieces of, of your vCenter server that we can't recreate for you automatically. If it, we don't expect a problem with the upgrade, but uh, in any time, whether it's doing an in-place upgrade or you're just doing backups, if there's nothing else that you're backing up in your vCenter server, it's got to be the database itself and those SSL certificates because we can't recreate those for you automatically. So I've already made a backup. I check the checkbox to indicate that I've done so. And to continue onwards, I click Next. On this screen here, uh, we are offered the option of either having the vCenter agent uh, installed automatically or manually on all the hosts in the vCenter server inventory. Uh, in this case, to make my life easier, I'm simply going to choose to do automatic, but if ever you had a reason to do otherwise, you can choose to manually install that agent. Again, we'll go with automatic and click Next. On this screen here, we indicate which account we want the vCenter server service to run as, and as you can see, we can uh, specify a specific account, but what I'm going to do to keep things nice and simple for this demonstration is to choose to use the local system account. And I'm just going to double check here. Let's see, vc01.vclass.local is in fact the fully qualified domain name of my vCenter server, so that looks good. I don't have to fill out these other two fields because we're using a local account, excuse me, local system account. 
So everything looks good here. We'll click Next. And once again, we see a number of ports listed here. Uh, once again, you'll want to review these port numbers with your firewall administrator to make certain that these port numbers are open so that the vCenter server can communicate with the other components in your infrastructure. The checkbox down here below, which I'm going to check, uh, allows, excuse me, I'm going to make certain is unchecked, allows us to increase the number of ephemeral ports in my small lab environment. I don't need to use these ephemeral ports um, at all, let alone increase them. So I'm going to leave this checkbox unchecked and click Next. On this screen, um, we are offered the, the ability to size our vCenter server, specifically the JVM that the vCenter server uses. And as you can see here, uh, we have three different sizes, small, medium, and large. And the different sizes, as we see uh, for each of these, corresponds to roughly how many hosts and VMs you anticipate having in your environment. Now, I don't ever anticipate my environment growing large at all. So I'm going to go with the default uh, of small, which is appropriate in this environment because I have far fewer than 100 hosts and far fewer than 1,000 virtual machines. But if you had a large infrastructure, you can choose medium or large. We'll go with small and click next. And we are on the ready to install screen. So we'll click the install button. The vCenter server installation kicks off. Once again, installing the vCenter server component takes a bit of time. So we are going to fast forward the video. And now the installation of vCenter is complete. So we'll click Finish. Uh, recall that we're performing a simple install, and we just saw that the four different components, single sign-on server, the vSer web client, the inventory service, and the vCenter server have been installed. We'll click OK to continue. Upgrading the vCenter server is a crucial step in upgrading your vSphere 4.1 environment to vSphere 5.5. But there's more steps, so be sure to continue watching this video series. In the next video, we'll be taking a look at a demonstration of how to upgrade the vSphere Update Manager server. This is one video in a six-part series of videos which demonstrate how to upgrade from vSphere 4.1 to vSphere 5.5. Be sure to watch all the videos in this series. And visit the vSphere product page at vmware.com for valuable resources such as technical white papers, technical documentation, customer case studies, communities of interest, as well as other video demonstrations. The following offerings are available from VMware Education for vSphere.